Hey guys, I'm Mark. Today we're going to do another tomato tasting. This is going to be one part of a four part series on all the different tomatoes that I'm going to be tasting in my garden, at least the ones that are ready right now. In another video, I've already done the pink types, the purple types, the black types, all the slicers uh, in those color fields. And then in another video yet, I'm going to cover just the standard red slicers, all the regular red round tomatoes. And then in another video yet, I'm going to cover the what I call snacking types, the cherry tomatoes, the grape tom tomatoes, the little guys like this. But this video is going to be about everything else. So the yellow ones, the orange ones, the striped ones, all the crazy different kinds. I've got 14 of them here out on my table to try. So we'll get started with them. What I'm going to do is just go through one by one and tell you a little bit about each, how I feel the flavor compares one to the next as best as I can. So to first start off with, we're going to do the Ananas Noir. This is probably as far as right now, my favorite tomato as far as flavor goes. The texture is incredible. It's just a, it's a staple in my garden. Now, a lot of these tomatoes on this table I've never tasted before. I've never tasted taiga. Well, we'll get into each one as I go. I'll tell you if, I, uh, if I've ever tasted it before or not. Another thing is these signs kind of might blow over over the course of this video. We'll see. I'm gonna to try to just kind of prop them back up best as I can, but you know, we're doing our best. So this is Ananas Noir. If you're wondering what the little blue stickers are, those are just pieces of painter's tape. I found that painter's tape works really, really well for just labeling, putting the initials on what each tomato is as I'm harvesting it and as I'm putting it into the boxes. That way when I get it, you know, well, normally to the kitchen, but in this case, when I get them all together, I'm gonna to know exactly which one's which and I won't get them mixed up. Just standard painter's tape. Anyway, this is Ananas Noir. Gorgeous tomato. It's like a it's like a painting on the inside. You can see that it's it's pretty green. It's a relatively green tomato. I'll hold another ripe fruit up for comparison. You can see it's starting to turn a little bit red on the one side, but this is as ripe as it gets. This is ripe as you want to let it to get. It it will start to crack and start to get soft much farther after this. There are several tomatoes on this table that are like that. But, uh, but this guy's ready to go and I can't wait. Mm. I, don't, I don't think you can beat this. I, I still haven't found a tomato to this date that beats a Nanus Noir, which is French for black pineapple. I haven't found one that beats it on flavor and texture. I'm sorry, I just haven't. It is just so, so good. But I could spend a lot of time on that, but light's fading a little bit on us and we got a lot to cover, so I'm just gonna keep on moving on. This guy here is Aunt Ruby's German Green. This is another example of a tomato that is perfectly ripe. It's dead ripe. It's starting to crack a little bit. Any much more uh, color to it than this, it's gonna start getting soft on you but you can see it's got a little bit of an orange, a little bit of a yellow, and just a hair of pink starting to show through. And it is ready to cut. Whoops, there goes the pineapple pig sign. There we go. Well, the inside of this tomato, the Aunt Ruby's Jubin Green, is a lot similar to the Ananas Noir. You can see the pink kind of coming in, shining through there. These green tomatoes, I mean, a lot of people are just turned off by them just by the color. I don't want to eat a green tomato, but I dare you to blindfold whoever says things like that and have them try a tomato side by side. The, the flavors of these green ones are just awesome. Mm. And this one's no different. If I were to say, if I were to even to, if I were to say, I'd say this tomato was even almost a little bit overripe. Personally, I like my, I don't like my tomatoes to be dead, dead, super ripe. They start to get soft, the texture changes a little bit. When they're all, like almost ripe, that's when I find the texture is just perfect. I think that the complexity of the flavors is there, the sweetness is there, but you don't start getting into like mealiness sort of territory. But anyway, Aunt Ruby's gr German Green, fantastic. Tastes sort of like a brandy wine, if you've ever had that. Let me just get one more taste here. Mm. 
Very sweet. Texture is exceptional. Virginia Sweets, that's a great one. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, so I'm just going to lay these back out where I got them from as I go. Galaxy. That's a crazy looking tomato. It's called Galaxy because of all the different striations and little dots on there and whatnot. The, uh, where the places that the sun hits this tomato will start to turn a little bit black or purple like that. And they, they call, that's the anthocyanin pigment that really gets activated from the sunlight hitting it. This fruit right here in my right hand was a little bit more shaded on the plant. So you can see it, it, hasn't, it, it hasn't developed that color on the outside or on the shoulders of the skin. Some of the tomatoes that are really high up on the plant, they've got a lot more of this going on. But these are the first fruits to ripen. All of these tomatoes on the table here are the first fruits to ripen on the plants. And as I said, I've, I've exercised enough self-control to, uh, to wait until this video to taste a lot of these for the first time ever. So we're going to taste this one right now. This is Galaxy. Wow. Well, the inside looks like a, like a normal tomato. Really nice meat to, to gel ratio there. Bread knife works great for cutting tomatoes, by the way. Mmm. It's different. Almost has like a, it's, it's, it's very unique flavor. It's almost like a, like a, like a bubble gum or like a taffy type flavor to it. It's, it's hard to describe. It's soft, but uh, mm. it's soft, but it's, it's mild. It's sweet. Yeah, I'd say bubblegum taffy. I kind of, I kind of go with that. I like, I like that description. Not a real strong uh, or acidic flavor to it. That's Galaxy. Very nice. That one I've never tried before, and this one I've never tried before as well. This is Garden Peach, and the reason why it's called that is it really looks just like a peach. They're perfect tomatoes. They don't get any blemishes on the top, no cracking whatsoever, and they are fuzzy. It's the first tomato that I've ever grown that's fuzzy. Beautiful, beautiful plant, beautiful tomatoes on it. This one, I didn't really know where to put this in terms of categories. Some of these tomatoes don't exactly fit into a category. Yeah, I wouldn't call this a snacking or a grape or a cherry tomato, and I wouldn't exactly call it a slicer either, but we're going to throw it into the everything else category for sake of this video. It's yellow. It's got a little bit of a pink blush to it. Oh, that's right. I want to cut one sideways. I want to try to keep these consistent and cut it the same way every time. Nice yellow inside. Nice. Smooth, clean, sweet. Just a good standard flavored tomato. Nothing real unique about it in terms of how a flavor goes, but the, um, the skin, you don't pick that up at all. It's not like eating a peach where you feel all that fuzziness going on. You don't get any of that whatsoever. Great plant, very productive. Very uniform, blemish-free fruit, uh, fruits on there. This one, Golden Jubilee, this is a staple. This is an excellent tomato. I think Holly put her teeth into this one when it was on the golf cart. But the reason why I like these Golden Jubilee ones, this fruit may not be, uh, may not be a good representation, but usually these fruits are a little bit more elongated than this. And what's great about that is you get a lot more slices out of it if you're going to put it on a tomato or on like a tomato sandwich or something like that, you know, any kind of sandwich. A lot of tomatoes they get sort of sort of squashed like this. And there's only so many slices you could take out of it in that direction, but but this type of tomato, this uh, golden jubilee, that shape definitely helps it out a lot. Productivity is great. Very uh very Uniform, pretty blemish-free fruits. See, there's the inside on it. There's some, some hollow cavities going on there. Low acidity. These yellow-orange tomatoes, 
generally people say that there's a lower acidity. Now, I'm not, I'm not enter entirely sure where this falls on the pH scale, but in terms of flavor goes, if you're gonna describe acidity as a flavor, it's, it's less acidic than a, than a typical red or purple black tomato. Good, mild, sweet, good texture. As I said, Golden, Ju Golden Jubilee is a staple. All right, Green Giant. Never had this one before. This is another one that my buddy Dave recommended to me. A lot of the ones that are on this table and in a lot of the other videos that I'm gonna be making, the, the four videos about the tomato trials, excuse me, a lot of these tomatoes came from Dave or Dave recommended them to me. And he says this is his favorite green tomato. And the reason why he likes it a lot is because it's a lot more uniform fruits on the plant compared to something like the Aunt Ruby's German green. You'll see this has a lot more cat facing to it sometimes. I picked this as an example to show you. This is, a, you know, this sort of weird deformed fruits. They're not all like that, but they're more like that than this variety is. But we'll see how I, what I think about the flavor here. Okay, so there's, there's no, virtually no pink going on like there was in the Aunt Ruby's. So there's the Aunt Ruby's in my right hand right here, just to show you for comparison. And this is the Green Giant. So other than that pink going on, relatively, you know, pretty much the same. There's the bottom of the German Green. There's a tiny bit of pink and orange starting there. And as this fruit ripens, that's not to say that it won't turn a little bit more pink, but that's the example that we have right now. Oops. Oh man. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I like it better than Aunt Ruby's. Oh. Sweet texture is nice and smooth. Got a little bit of a tanginess to it. Almost like a almost like a grape. Mm. That's a wonderful tomato. Oh man, not, not super, super sweet. This one's all about hitting all the right notes in just the right amount. That is, thank you, Dave. Mm. That is a fantastic tomato. Green Giant. On to another Dave recommendation. This is Hughes, H-U-G, well, you got the sign there. H-U-G-H-S. Just a pale yellow tomato. It's not quite a white tomato and I wouldn't really call it a full-blown yellow tomato either. It's sort of somewhere in the middle. A little bit of a pink going on. It's mild. It's mild as to be expected with something like this. I would think if you have too much acid or too much of a problem with handling acid, then this would be a great tomato for you. A lot of people I give tomatoes to say, you know, I, I love tomatoes, but I can't handle having too much acid. So I think this would be a good solution for, for you if you, if you feel that way. Mm. Good sweetness, good texture. This one is a crazy variety. I've never seen a tomato in this color field before. I don't even know what to call it. I don't know if there's a, a name for this color. It's sort of a fluorescent, orangish, greenish, pinkish. It's called Malakitovaya Shatolka. I think I'm saying that right. I have no idea. I don't, I don't know if that's Eastern European or what that name is, but oh wow. Nice green inside. Wouldn't totally expect that from the outside, but nice lime green interior. Just from touching it, it feels like it's got a good texture. Mm. 
If I try, let's see. I've so far the only ones that I've I've tried before have been Aunt Rumi's German Green, Ananas Noir, and Golden Jubilee. I've never tasted anything else on this table. Uh, Virginia Sweets, I've had that. That's one of my favorites. And then Persimmon, I've had that. And then Awak and Jewel, I've tasted for the first time this year. So everything else is new. I'll just I'll just say it like that. Eh, it's okay. I've tasted better. That's my that's my that's my take on it. Is eh. It's not bad. The texture's good. It's not super sweet though. It doesn't have any wild or crazy flavors. It just tastes like a regular middle of the road flavor profile. Good textured tomato. But the colors of it are pretty wild. So that sets it apart. At least on the, uh, you know, if you're gonna spread them out somewhere. Okay, let's go over to, this is Owakin Jewel. Now, again, that's not one that I'm entirely sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. That's O-A-X-A-N, Jewel. I think it's also Jewel de Owaka. I think that's another way to, to put that. But this is very similar to the Virginia Sweets. It's very similar to a lot of those uh, yellow and pink blush, you know, Virginia Sweets, Hillbilly, Pineapple, uh, um, oh, there's a bunch of them. What's the one, the German one? Old German, I think. Old German's one of these. A lot of these taste very similar. The differences usually lie in the production and then just their fruit quality and appearance. This, I guess if I had to say, the difference that I can notice so far between these two is just a little bit of a, of a fruit shape difference. You see the Virginia Sweets is a little bit more flat and this one's just a little bit more of a rounder shape. So far, I haven't been able to taste much of a difference between the two. That is fantastic. That is, that is my kind of tomato. It's sweet. It's got, a, it's got a firmness to it. It's got a good texture to it. It's not, it's not like a lot of these tomatoes can be super soft and they just kind of melt in your mouth. This one, this one's a little bit, it's, it's, it's firmer. It's, a, it's got a, I don't know, it's just firmer. Mm. I think because of that, what I've noticed is these type tomatoes, especially the Virginia Sweets, they tend to hold up a little bit better. Like a lot of these tomatoes, when you pick them and you bring them inside and you sit them on the kitchen counter, they might only last for like two or three days tops before they start rotting there because they, they're just so delicate. But for, for whatever reason, these, uh, these, these yellow ones with the pink blush and the green shoulders tend to hold up a little bit longer. So that's something to keep in mind if you're, uh, if you're taking things to market or if you just want fruit that holds up, that holds up longer. Mm. Walk and Jewel. Next up is Persimmon. It's called that because the, the color of this is identical to a persimmon. I mean, it's, it's spot on. This is a variety that Thomas, and, Thomas Jefferson grew. And the inside is just as beautiful as the outside. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous tomato. One of the people that lives here on the farm, this is, was his favorite tomato out of all the ones that I grew last year. And it's up there. It's up there. I, I mean, after tasting something like the Awaken Jewel, I mean, I don't think it can, it competes, but it's not going to, the Awaken Jewel definitely wins. But excellent tomato. Uh, the, as far as the orange varieties go, I'd have to say that the, for, for the pure orange varieties, it would be a toss up between Persimmon and Golden Jubilee. Chef's Choice Orange is a very nice orange tomato too but I find that's a little bit more in the yellow territory. Personally, that might, just have been the, that might just have been the seed that I got last year. I've only grown that one time. This is Pineapple Pig. This is from the same breeder of uh, the Galaxy there. This has, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but it's just got an incredible skin to it. 
just a beautiful marbling. Before these fruits turn yellow, they have they're a, they're a light green with a dark green striping on them. Just stunning, stunning looking tomato. The inside, nice bright yellow, just a hair of pink coming around the center. Let's see if I can taste some of that galaxy in there. Mm -hmm. Definitely get a little bit of the galaxy. Not quite as much of a, like what I call a bubble gum or a taffy type flavor, but this is, this is a much, not much, but it's a milder tomato. Very smooth. It's not a, it's not a kick you down the stairs type of flavor. It's, it's a, something that you would imagine for a yellow type. Mm. The texture, the texture is not quite as good as the Galaxy, I think. Taiga. Now this is one I've been dying to try. That's Taiga. Look at this tomato. Is that beautiful or what? It's like a, it reminds me of an Ananas Noir, like mixed with like a bull's heart type tomato. I mean, it's elongated like this. So let's, let's just not waste any more time and get in. I'm going to cut this one because it's cracked. Uh, we'll do this one. This is taiga, like the, uh, like the boreal forest, the subarctic up north. Very pretty. Nice inside. I'm just going to take a piece of Ananas Noir to show you comparison. This one's even got, this one's even got a little bit more rose pink to it, a little bit darker color. Oh, I can't wait to try this tomato. Got a bug on me. Okay. Oh yeah. Mmm. Wow. It's great. It it's a lot like the Ananas Noir, but it's a slightly different texture. It's almost got like a I'm not gonna say stringiness, but there's there's almost like a fibrous element to the texture of it. Mmm. It's sweet. I still think. Ananas Noir beats it though. We'll see how I feel later in the season after I taste a few more, but as far as right now, Ananas Noir is still at the top. All right, Virginia Sweets. This is my other sweetheart. This is, this is very similar to a lot of the other yellow and pink and, and and yellow with a pink and, and green at the shoulders. Well, this one doesn't have green at the shoulders, but a lot of them do. It's very similar in flavor in that regard, but I find that Virginia Sweets for me winds up being a little bit more productive and I have less issues with cracking around the shoulders and micro, micro cracking and things like that. And this is, this is really the, the town favorite or the, uh, you know, everybody around here seems to say that this is just an incredible tomato. Hey, I want some of those Virginia Sweets. I think I grew four or six plants this year. I'm not sure. I grew, I grew a lot more than two just because they are so good. This, this is my mother's favorite one, Virginia Sweets. I'm acting like I never tried it before. Mm. So good. I don't know what else is, I can say about this. It's awesome. It's awesome. That's just, just about all there is to it. Stores well, great color. This one is white tom tomasol. Tomasol, tomasol. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but me personally, I've never been a huge fan of white tomatoes. I just, I, I, I can use a little bit more flavor than that. They seem to be a little bit on the blander side. Uh, I like the yellow ones, but the white ones are just a little too clean for me. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful inside there. Look at that. But that's, that's how I feel so far. We'll see if this changes my mind a lot. Oh, it's still pretty mild. It's not up there. It's better. It's better than some of the other ones that I've tasted. I grew a, uh, 
Italian ice cherry tomato last year was the only white variety that I grew last year and I wasn't really too happy with the flavor of that one. I think this one takes it. But if you don't like a real strong acidic tomato, then again, maybe this will definitely be one for you. So there you have it, guys. There's, there's 14 of the everything else tomato category that I've got ready so far in my garden. As I said before, I've got another video out about the pink, purple, and black varieties, and then another video yet to come about the standard red types, and then once more after that, I'm gonna have the cherry, grape, and all the snacking different varieties together as a different video. I felt like if we did it all together as one big video, it'd just be too much, so I think breaking up that way makes it a little bit better. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.